Hi there, how are you doing? Welcome to our sustainable home. Come on in. Yeah, so I'm Mark Clayton. Um, I've worked in, I guess, the area of sustainable design for quite a few years, mainly on other people's houses. Um, and I thought this would be a really good opportunity to try and build one myself um, and, and see how it goes. Um, you know, hippies build sustainable buildings. Like, look, maybe in the 60s and 70s that, that was the case. Um, but nowadays, uh, uh, being sustainable doesn't mean you're a hippie. Being sustainable means you're, 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 you, you just want to be conscious around what's going on in your environment. It's about let's try and do something which is going to not deplete the resources. Um, for me, a sustainable building is a building which uses very, very little energy, can produce its own power, collect its own water, um, and actually not rely on external sources as much as other buildings. And the, although the upfront cost might be slightly more, it doesn't cost anything to run. We're using about four kilowatt hours a day. The average house in Australia for two people is 15 up to 25. If you ask someone, do you want a comfortable home? They're always gonna say yes. So, so how do I make that home comfortable? Well, we think about things like indoor air quality, about breeze paths, around location of windows. Having to go to bed every night with an air conditioner going, you've got that constant noise and then you've got this really dry air. What impact can that have on your health when you could actually have a building where you don't need to do that? If you've got a floor plan, you can change that floor plan at design stage very, very easily. And it costs the same amount of money to put a window in the wrong place as the right place. So, so why don't we just put the window in the right place? This building is, is, is really well orientated for the block. I could have built this building 180 the other way around on the same block. It would have cost the same money, but it would have been a really uncomfortable house. A sustainable building needs to be driven. Like you, you can't just expect it to work. So you actually need to start thinking about what is this building doing? So the, the actual owner has to be a little bit um, active in, in keeping the building running well. You may see behind me, we've got a sliding door. Um, we also have a sliding door on the north and at the end of the corridor, so in summer we better open these doors up and the sea breeze will come right through the whole building cooling it down. Um, again, from a sustainability point of view, that means we're not using aircon. The house has got double glazed throughout, it's thermally broken so the heat doesn't transfer. It's, very, it's built very tightly, we deliberately were conscious of air infiltration and that is either gaps in building fabric. Um, a lot of houses, you'll heat them up in winter and that heat rises and goes through all the gaps in the ceiling where the downlights are. If you have an existing home, first thing you should do is go and have a look at your insulation in the ceiling. The amount of people that turn around and say, yeah, I've got insulation in the ceiling. I'm like, when was it installed? They're like 10 years ago. I'm like, if you have insulation in your ceiling that was installed 10 years ago, it's not doing anything. The way insulation works is it starts by trapping air. Over time, the dust from the roof compresses the insulation. As the insulation gets compressed, the less air you have, your insulation is not working. It's as simple as that. We have internal brickwork in the main living area. So, the, so we've got more brick on the inside of this building with the insulation on the outside, which creates more thermal mass. Thermal mass heats up slowly and cools down slowly, which means it's really, really good at stabilizing the temperature. Um, we were very fortunate with this block that we already had some mature trees on the western side, which shade a lot of the western, house, western part of the building in summer. We've planted a deciduous vine on the northern side of the main sliding door because I know that with the eave that we have, um, we'll, we'll certainly shade the high level windows but not, but not the courtyard. Council were actually pretty good um, in respect for the majority of the approvals. It went through reasonably quickly. Um, the front of the building originally was a single rake um, with, with quite a thick eave which sort of matched the back of the building. Um, because we're here in Glanville, um, it's a bit of a conservation area or heritage area they kind of wanted the building to have a more of a heritage feel doing it was has been you know it was a tough it was a tough experience it was it was a pretty big project and it's been quite demanding on, on time um, but we got through it now and it's now done um, and of course if I can inspire one or two people to say this makes sense I want to do something like this then then it's got to be worth it and that's really cool